what's up everybody? This is Scott with Titans of CNC and we have something really cool for you guys today. I got a solid piece of alumina ceramic. It was actually meant for a military application. We can't create the exact part because of confidentiality. However, we are gonna showcase this machine's capabilities on super hard materials like this ceramic. So we're gonna put a really cool profile in here, some grooves, some chamfers, and a radius. So let's get into it. One of the most important parts about grinding is your process because you want a repeatable process to make your parts accurate over and over again. So our setup is really important, and especially with a heavy part like this, and it's kind of unique. We got this dowel, we got some threads, so we have kind of a lot to consider when we're talking about holding onto this part so we can get that repeatability from part to part. In the past, we've had the synchronous tailstock up here. Um, we've had between centers, now, we wanted to cut this part between centers with the synchronous tailstock, but since it's so heavy, we we're unsure that it was gonna hold uh, when it's spinning in the machine. And of course, when we're cylindrical grinding, the part is spinning along with the wheel. So you don't want the wheel spinning the part in between centers, right? So that's why we would have drive dogs, which went into our next potential setup. The interesting thing about the drive dogs is that you see this dowel, how large it is. We weren't able to actually reach the part without clamping onto the threads. And obviously we don't wanna clamp a drive dog onto our threads because we could potentially ruin them. So the next best thing that we decided to actually use was our three jaw chuck. Now our three jaw chuck just happens to have a center hole where these threads fit in perfectly. We're actually gonna put it into the chuck, the threads, and then we'll be able to clamp on the chuck onto the solid surface. That's gonna give us the rigidity we need to drive the part, as well as support that side and give us the best rigidity so that we can cut the part and get that repeatability that we're looking for. We decided to go with the spring-loaded dead tailstock because the synchronous tailstock is quite large. And since we're already driving the part with the work head and the three-jaw chuck, we really just need a simple support to uphold the other side of the part. We're gonna use a metal bonded diamond wheel. That means a solid metal wheel with the metal bonded, it means some sort of bronze and diamonds along the circumference of that wheel. It's actually gonna be grinding uh, off the ceramic. There are various grits of diamond bonded wheels. We started with a D33 diamond wheel, which is quite fine. We were peel grinding with that and finding that it was a little bit too slow. And the D92 wheel allowed us to be a little bit more aggressive and achieve the time that we wanted to get this part cut in. There is a big recess in here, so we can only go about three quarters of an inch deep into the ceramic before we're bottoming out that wheel. Something to consider uh, when we're selecting a wheel when we're peel grinding. Now, something else we want to talk about is our coolant flow. We have these really cool 3D printed nozzles attached to our coolant so that it can inject the coolant into the cut, but it also profiles around the wheel. This wheel has a 40 thou radius on each corner, so this nozzle is actually contoured to that, so we're getting coolant flow injected all the way around the wheel so that we're getting that maximum uh, lubricity from our coolant. With our grinding wheel, we're gonna be dressing it with the Studer wire dress system. If you don't know about the wire dress system, check out the video, we'll post it down below so you guys can go check out the wire EDM in this machine. It's, it's pretty crazy actually. There is a live spark flooded in coolant in this machine that actually erodes away the metal bond and refreshes this wheel. So check that out. Super cool. All right, so I want to give you guys a brief overview of Studer Contour Pro, which is the software we're gonna to use to program our profile on the ceramic to peel grind it. It looks uh, very similar to a typical cam software where you got basically a feature manager off to the left. We're just gonna go from the top and work our way down. I've already loaded my workpiece, right? So I'm gonna load a DXF file of the profile of my part, and it's automatically gonna create a somewhat CAD looking graphic on there for you. You can see we got our chamfers, radius, and we also have uh, my grooves on there. Once that's uploaded and looks good, and you've selected the geometry that you want to cut, we're gonna go right to our tools. In this case, this machine is loaded with three wheels, an ID wheel and two OD wheels. And tool one is my high-speed metal bonded diamond wheel, which is 
tool one right here, you can see that radius on there. It matches the profile of the, of the wheel that I already have in the machine. This was pre-programmed before we set up Studer Contour Pro. So that's been selected. Next, we're gonna to go to our machining section. This is where I'm gonna set up my stock allowance. So obviously the part isn't cut yet. So we have to let the software know where the stock is starting from so we can peel away material to leave behind our profile. So we've got our stock allowance set up. And then we're gonna to go to our operation plan. And this is the majority of the, of the very important stuff about your program your speeds and feeds, and your depths of cut. We're gonna use a machining strategy, which is gonna be axis parallel. What that does is it's gonna start in an axis and work its way down. Conversely, if we're gonna use contour parallel, your profile or your contour would follow the profile of the part, but we wanna start from a straight axis. So we're gonna use axis parallel for that. We got our grinding wheel selected already. And then in the general section, we have our infeed amount and that infeed is going to be the depth of cut that your wheel is going to be pushing into the material and then traversing so this is a diametric value of five thousandths that means the depth of cut is going to be half of that and two and a half thou so we've got some other variables here that uh, we're not going to worry too much about um, what we do want to talk about though is our infeed strategy which we're going to use both sides. So that means it's going to machine both sides of that profile at the same time and then work its way over to the other side of the part. We also have our X plunge. So as we're moving into the diameter of the part, now there's a difference between uh, the depth of cut that we're traversing and then also the depth that we're plunging into the material. And they're going to be a different. So we're going to use a X plunge of 40 thousandths per minute and we're gonna be traversing across the part at six inches a minute. All of those variables are going to come into account when we're calculating our Q prime. Now, if you're not familiar with grinding, you've probably never heard the term Q prime, but it's what grinders like to describe as their material removal rate. And you can think of it this way. Think of it as a scale of one to 10. One being a very light cut, similar to what you've seen on our steel parts when we're taking off tents, very little material is being removed. That would be a, about a one. You work your way up to five, like on the Walter machine from United Grinding, where we're cutting solid carbide, we're generally gonna be pushing a Q prime of about five. Now, we've done the calculation on this part and we're peel grinding ceramic we're getting a Q prime of about 11, 11 millimeters cubed per second. Q prime is unit per measure time. So when I say this has got a Q prime of about 11, that means that we're removing 11 cubic millimeters per second. Now it's been generated. Now we're gonna move down to our simulation, recalculate it, and then I got my wheel, and we're gonna hit play, and we can see a real time simulation of what's going to happen on my wheel. You can see how it's going left and right and then left and right. It also gives us a machine grinding time. So to finish this, it's going to take about three and a half hours, which is not bad for the amount of material we're moving off of this. So once that's good, we're going to stop it, reset the simulation. We're going to go to programs and then we're going to transmit, generate the program to the StuderWin software. And that's it. Now that our subroutine's been built, it's been generated and sent over to the main software, we're gonna get to cut. Yeah.
Man, that's great. We got our contours, we got our grooves. It's just a really, really cool process getting to see this thing grind all that away. It's almost like it was turning, except it's not. It's all ground on the S41 from United Grinding. It's really cool. So I hope you guys like that. If you have any questions, if you guys want to see some stuff, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.